Hey guys, Dr. Adam Nally here. I'm a board certified family physician and board certified uh, obesity medicine specialist. I figure I'd pop up my credentials right here on the screen so you can see who I am. I'm coming to you uh, live streaming on Facebook Live. Uh, today's the 26th of September and thought I would uh, talk to you about part number one of a 25 part series I'm going to do of uh, little video shorts about ketones and why they're important other than fat loss. So figured I would uh, give you a little bit of information uh, in, in regards to uh, why be in ketosis, uh, part one inflammation. So uh, we talked about yesterday a bunch of benefits that, that having higher ketones give other than uh, changing the way your body handles fat and, and changing the fuel supply. So the, uh, the first that I see often and very commonly and one of the first things that uh, people re respond to me about is that they, they actually feel 50 to 60 percent better. Uh, their inflammation diminishes, they feel less um, uh, tension, pain, and uh, infl inflammation. In fact, a few weeks ago I was at a conference and I had a lady that was um, in a ketogenic diet and using exogenous ketones and she came running up to me, uh, gave me a great big hug and said, look what I can do. And she squeezed her hands like this and she, uh, um, and I said, I, I didn't, I didn't know the lady, uh, but she had, she had been uh, watching some of our videos and using a ketogenic diet, uh, learned about uh, that through a number of uh, uh, blogs and sources and looking at my website uh, at docmuscles.com. Uh, and she said that uh, within three weeks of uh, increasing her ketones and cutting out the carbohydrates, her rheumatoid arthritis had dramatically improved where she could actually squeeze her hands. Now, it doesn't solve the rheumatoid arthritis and a ketogenic diet doesn't fix that problem, but what it does is dramatically decrease inflammation. And we know that it decreases inflammation um, from a couple studies, one of which was in 2015, uh, published in Nature Medicine uh, by uh, Yom and colleagues. Um, and this shows that uh, beta-hydroxybutyrate uh, blocks what's called NLRP3. Now that's a fancy long term, but it's an inflammasome. It's an inflammatory uh, signaling molecule that, that signals the release of uh, an, uh, two interleukins, interleukin 1 beta and interleukin 18, um, which drive the human monocyte or part of the immune system. What, what that uh, NLRP3 does is it turns on the inflammatory cascade. It's kind of like pushing the domino on a series of dominoes that cause uh, that, that cascade of inflammation to occur. Well, beta-hydroxybutyrate or ketones damper that down, specifically beta-hydroxybutyrate. Um, Short-chain short chain butyrates don't do that. Um, the medium chains and the long chains don't. It's specifically beta-hydroxybutyrate. So that specific hormone acts as an, uh, or that specific uh, molecule acts as fuel, but it also acts as a, a signaling molecule to turn down inflammation. Uh, this plays a role in uh, all of the inflammatory diseases of the joints, in all of the, uh, and also in, in irritable and inflammatory bowel. I have a number of people who tell me uh, that, uh, correlating with uh, uh, some of the studies that, are, that have been published in the last 10 years, that inflammatory bowel uh, improves by anywhere between 50 to 60 percent. So the, the inflammation that is driving, being driven in the gut, when the beta-hydroxybutyrate level is high, you see improvement in that regard. The second is that that beta, that interleukin one uh, beta, is actually an, is a, an, is a second signaling molecule that plays a, a, a role in stimulating something called serum amyloid A. Now we, we abbreviate it by saying SAA or uh, serum amyloid A or amy it causes something called amyloidosis. Uh, it actually plays a significant role in vascular or cardiovascular disease, so the, the formation of blockages. So that interleukin uh, 1 beta stimulates SAA or, or serum amyloid A and it drives the process of worsening vascular disease or vascular blockage, blockage of the blood vessels. That's important to understand. So when you turn on or you raise your, uh, your beta hydroxybutyrate, you actually damper down that process and you turn down the inflammation at the vascular level. Um, this we used to think this production was mainly in the liver, um, but we've actually found out that it's in the fat cell. And there's a there's a, a dependent uh, uh, there is a, a fat or body mass index dependent level of SAA production based on how much uh, fat you have in your fat cells. So the more weight you carry, the more fat you hold, uh, the more of that SAA you produce, and that and, and that increases that inflammation uh, much more. So uh, one of the things that I remember this by is we say, uh, the more sass you, the more fat you got, the more sass you has. And so the, the more fat you retain, uh, the, the bigger your fat cells become full, uh, the more SAA you produce and the more inflammation, the more pain and discomfort that, that arise. Uh, we know that from a couple studies in the Journal of Immunology uh, and also um, through Henry's Clinical Diagnosis and Management uh, Laboratory Methods, uh, a couple articles there. 
So that's important to understand. Uh, lastly, this uh, SAA, interleukin-1, interleukin-18, they all play a role in elevating CRP, which is the big hormone that a lot of cardiologists and your family doc may check as, as you're looking to see what's your inflammatory level or your risk for heart disease. Uh, but that's called CRP or C-reactive protein. Uh, that's a common lab test that's going to be checked at your physical, uh, looking for your risk for heart disease. And beta-hydroxybutyrate dampers that down, as well as dampering down a, another hormone called um, uh, a sedimentation rate or an ESR level, which is a blood measure that we can measure another form of inflammation. So uh, four different components that you can see that beta-hydroxybutyrate dampers down, all relating to inf inflammation. The NLRP3 inflammasome, uh, changing I I arthritis and irritable bowel. Uh, interleukin-1 is dampered down. Interleukin-18 is dampered down. That dampers the, the pro production of serum amyloid A, which is a which we call SA, SAA, SAS, uh, and it also uh, dampers uh, both CRP and and the sedimentation rates in, in the body. So important to understand, uh, as you lose weight, as the fat drops down, uh, you actually see less inflammation uh, being driven specifically by, by that production of SAA and beta hydroxybutyrate drops that. So that is reason number one to be in ketosis or nutritional ketosis, which is much different than ketoacidosis, and we'll talk about that at another time, uh, but that's your four to five minute uh, ketosis short from Dr. Adam Nally. So keep the fat high, keep the carbs low, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good night.